Our next step is to create a pack visualization with this hierarchical data. Um, so let's look for the documentation of the free uh, pack visualization. We can find it here in the documentation for the free hierarchy. And on top, we can see that there are several ways to render a hierarchy. And we're going with the last one, which is the pack. And in the pack, we can see that we have a function which is called pack. So let's import that from the um, hierarchy package, the free hierarchy. And uh, this pack function is expecting a root, and the root should be of type hierarchy. So in order to uh, create a pack, we first need to learn about uh, the free hierarchy. And the D3 hierarchy is also exported by our D3 hierarchy package. So let's import hierarchy as well. And, uh, what, and the hierarchy is expecting some data. And uh, this data should be in this, formal, uh, in this format described in this example. At least that's the default setup for the data. And this happened to be the exact same structure which we choose when we created our example data. So we can create our hierarchy by creating a new variable and we call it our animals hierarchy. And we use the hierarchy function providing our data. Now let's have a look into this uh, object we just created by using console log. And if we check, check the log uh, output of our application, we can see that we have um, a node class here, which contain, contains a def, a height, and some data, and children, and a parent of null. Uh, so the data uh, is, the, is the name of our animals again, and the children. So this is basically uh, this first, this data which we included originally. And within children, we can find more classes of type node. And uh, in here, we can see that the def is one and the height is two. And within, and the parent is our actual parent node. So it's a link back to the initial root. So this is just a different data structure representing the same content uh, as, as this example. But uh, why? Do we need this new data structure? Well, D3 provides some additional functions on this data structure, which are explained here. So this one is describing one node in our data structure, which we also just uh, started to discover. And uh, we see that this node.def is describing the, is, is zero for the root node, and it's increasing for each descendant in the next generation. So we can validate that by having another look in our data. So here we have def zero at our root node. And if we go into the children, the def is one. And if we go into that children, the def will be two. Uh, so there are some more uh, properties, for instance, the height, which is zero for the leaves, and then it's the greatest uh, if you're uh, in the root. So in our root, we can see that uh, our maximum height is three which is also correct if you think about the data. It's the uh, animal, fish, marine, hellbot. So that's the hierarchy, that's a height three. Now, if you look further, you can see that there are several functions which are now accessible because we have a hierarchy. One of them is, for instance, uh, the descendants function, which will return an array of all descendant nodes. So this will basically just flatten our structure. So let's try this function. So if we call descendants on our animal hierarchy, we'll see that we now have an array of nodes. Uh, so all those nodes are flattened. And this will help us later when we try to render this uh, hierarchy. Now that we successfully have created our hierarchy and we have our root element, we can take a look back into the uh, pack. So pack was expecting uh, a root element, which we have now. So let's create our animals pack by calling pack with our 
animals hierarchy. And let's also render this into, with console log so that we can explore the resulting data structure. And uh, if we have a look in here, we see that this one is actually a function and it's not, um, it's, it's not data. So this is something which we didn't expect. And uh, it's, it's a bit hard to read, I think, from the, just from the, um, the free documentation. Uh, and it's a bit easier if you start to look at some examples. Um, but basically, pack is uh, expecting some uh, properties in order to define what a pack should actually look like. So this one is returning a function to create a pack. So if we want to have a new pack with just the default parameters where we did not specify anything yet, we, we have to call pack and then we get a create pack function. And if we use this create pack function and we take a look at our animals pack, we will see that we now have our node again with uh, some new parameters added, which is the an X property, a Y property, and a radius of not a number, which seems to be uh, another problem that we need to solve. Uh, so let's take a deeper look into the description of packroot. Uh, as we can see here, is that uh, for all for for all the nodes in our hierarchy, we should get an X, a Y, and an R um, attribute, which we saw, but the R attribute was not set. And the important part is this sentence here. We must call root sum before passing the hierarchy to the pack layout. And we probably also want to call root sort, which we do not need to use in our example, but we definitely need to have a look into root sum. So now we're back into the uh, functions of the hierarchy, which we started um, exploring before. So here's also the descendants function, which we used before that. And now here is the sum function. And the sum function is a function which will uh, specify a value to every node in our hierarchy. And this node is not only the value which this function will return, but it's also the value of all descendants. So, for example, if we decide to create a uh, sum function, which will just return uh, 1, it will be one for the cat and for the dog and for the mammal it will be three because it will sum up all of its children. So it's one plus one plus one is three for the mammal. And uh, let's take a look at another example which for the fish for example. So for the fish we have the rainbow trout, the hailbutt, the freshwater, the marine and the fish itself. So it will have a sum of five and the animal will then have a sum of 8. And these sums will describe how large the circle uh, should actually be in the pack visualization. And this helps the free to determine the sizes of our circles. So after we specified a sum of 1 for our hierarchy, let's take another look into our data after saving it. And now we see that we have a value for r, which is 0 0.5, and for x and for y it's the same. And if we take a look in our children, we see um, that we have some values here as well. Those values are pretty small, uh, because right now we are rendering a pack visualization, which is pretty small. Uh, let's take a quick look back into the documentation of the pack visualization. And down here we find a function which is called pack.size which allows us to specify the size of a pack. And we can see here that it defaults to 1.1, one, one, which is the reason why we see exactly those numbers which we see in the, in the, when we took a deeper look into the data. Uh, so let's maybe just use the size function in order to create a pack of size 500, 500. And if we now take a look into our pack visualization once more, we see that the numbers are changing. So this one should render a circle at position 250, 250, which will be the middle point of a screen of size 500, 500. And it should have a radius of 250. So it will be a circle spanning the complete uh, viewpoint. Uh, so let's start, uh, let's try to render this into React 
and uh, one thing we already uh, we, we already used was the descendants function. So if we use the descendants function now on our animals pack, we get a list of nodes with the attributes with, with x and y positions and the radius. And we can use those lists in order to render them in React. Uh, so let's map over those nodes and we know that we will receive an x position, a y position and a radius and we will move that into an SVG circle. And an SVG circle is expecting a CX value for the X coordinate, a CY value for the Y coordinate, and an R value for the radius. If we want to render a SVG, we need to have an SVG container. And if we rerun that, we'll see that we have a circle, which is uh, quite small. And uh, the reason for that is that if you render an SVG, by default, it will be rendered uh, with uh, the width of 200 and the height of 100. Therefore, we cannot see our complete circle. But if we adjust these settings to a width of uh, 500 and a height of 500, which is exactly the size as we specified for the pack, we will see a complete circle. Now, all our circles are colored in black by default. Therefore, we will just see a large big circle. But if we change our fill to be transparent, which will change the color of the circle to be transparent, and then we add a black stroke, then we should see the, um, the visualization, the pack visualization of our data. So this one looks pretty um, pretty uh, symmetric. Maybe let's add uh, one more data so that we see that it's really working properly. So let's add a mouse in here and we see that now we have three circles in here. So this one is representing the mammals with dog, fish, cat and mouse and this one is representing the fish with marine and freshwater fishes. Uh, now after we successfully uh, rendered the pack visualization, uh, so maybe one more thing which we can do in order to improve the um, this pack visualization is to add some padding between the circles. Those circles are right now pretty big, so let's add, so we can also use this padding function which is expecting a value so that the circles have some padding in between them so that they're not that large and they do not overlap with each other. So now we see that we are also able to see the hailbot and the uh, rainbow trout which were not visible before because they had the same sum and there was no padding involved but with the padding now we are able to see our full hierarchy visualized as a pack list.